All right, well, welcome everybody to another exciting Wu University program. This is such an incredible topic. It's been something that Dr. Samji and I have been have been kind of developing over the past few months. And when we were talking about it in the beginning, it was just something that I, I got really excited about. And it's, I think this is going to be such a, a wonderful program this evening. I'm your host. I'm Dr. Stephanie Wu. I am the founder of Wu University. And I would like to say thank you so much to Synergize who are, who's supporting this event with an unrestricted educational grant. And without further ado, I wanted to introduce our amazing speaker for tonight, Dr. Samji. He is an incredible person, a good friend, and uh, I, I'm just so thrilled for this presentation this evening. He is a graduate of the University of Houston College of Optometry, and along with his wife, Dr. Sana Samji, he's the owner of a private practice in Greater Houston. Dr. Samji practices full scope and his clinical interests are dry eye, myopia management, hybrid and scleral lenses and performance vision training. Dr. Samji is on the medical team for the Sugarland Skeeters minor league baseball team and he consults for pro franchises. He's also a regional leader with PECA. He loves helping other optometrists and is an adjunct clinical professor at University of Houston College of Optometry. And it, something else I wanted to point out is that the when we were going through his presentation and kind of looking at his slides, which are awesome, by the way, I love all the case reports that are coming up. But the reason that he wanted to do this event was because he really wants to help other doctors. He wants to inspire other doctors on using some of these contact lenses in clinic. And, uh, you know, just out of the goodness of his heart and just being a, a generous person, he's here to share a wealth of information with us. So so thank you so much, Dr. Samji, for being with us tonight and take it away. Thank you so much, Dr. Wu. Wow, that's an amazing, um, amazing introduction. I've never had that. I think the bar is set really high. So let's get started. All right. So today I really want to chat a little bit about sports vision, what it is. We're going to go through some of the foundations and you know how to think about fitting your contact lens patients, um, thinking about the sports they, they, they play and the activities they do and how we can help them really. And that's really what this is about. I'm gonna share some case studies with you and, and we'll go through them all one by one. I have no financial interest to disclose uh, in this presentation here. Okay, a little bit about me. So I was born and raised in Southern Africa. I'm a proud Texan, I graduated 2011 from UHCO. Uh, I bought a, a private practice in 2012. We do full scope in our practice. We're in Sugarland, Texas, which is just outside of Houston. It's a suburb of Houston. Um, a few years ago, I founded 2020 Athlete, which is the performance vision part of our practice. Uh, I have an optometry spouse, Dr. Sana Samji. We have two boys, uh, five and seven. They just turned five and seven uh, a few months ago. Um, we're a soccer family. I mean, I love soccer. My favorite football team is Liverpool Football Club. Um, I, have a, I have a nice uh, Liverpool Football Club um, jersey and stuff hanging here in my room. Um, and, you know, I play soccer once a week and I live, breathe and eat soccer pretty much when I'm not working. Uh, I love helping other ODs and my goals really are to help all of us practice um, together in a better way and improve uh, our profitability as well. And I'm passionate about enhancing visual performance in anyone, um, you know, not just athletes. For me, everyone is an athlete. A little bit about what I do. I'm a regional leader for PECA. Uh, I'm a team optometrist for the Sugarland uh, Skeeters minor league baseball team. I consult and advise some professional franchises and athletic trainers. Uh, I teach fourth year students at my practice here, and uh, that's, that's a lot of fun. I'm a member of a few associations. Um, I'm gonna be an incoming advisory board member June, uh, June the 1st for the International Sports Vision Association. Uh, I'm part of the Scleral Lens Education Society and I intend to pursue fellowship because I love sclerals. I do a lot of myopia management also. Um, I'm part of the Neuro Optometric Rehab Association, which ties really nice into the performance vision stuff and the TOA and the AOA. So let's get our first poll going here. Um, you know, let's talk about how many of you are actually invo involved in some sort of fitness activity. I'm curious. So let's think about this pre-COVID. You know, are you active? Do you, do you do a fitness sport, individual sport, team sport? Uh, 
All right, 72% of you. Wow, that's amazing. So this little graphic over here basically says that 67% of the U.S. population age six and older is involved in some sort of sport. You know, we break it down into individual sports, um, outdoor sports, indoor sports, uh, racket sports, team sports, water sports, winter sports. You know, think about this. Think about the opportunity that we have in our primary care practices to help all these people who are doing all these things that we're probably not even asking them about. So I have another, another question for you. Uh, can we do poll two, please? How many of you want to improve your general sports performance? I mean, I, I personally love winning, so I will do anything I can to get better at soccer. Yeah, 92% of you said you'd like to improve your general sports performance. I mean, that is mind blowing, right? So think about all those patients who you could be asking these questions to, right? Um, let's talk about some of the general opportunities that we have, knowing that we have so many patients involved in sports, okay? We can basically correct their prescription as best as we can, right? We can get them protective eyewear or custom eyewear. We can uh, involve ourselves in some sort of performance vision training or sports vision. We can do ortho care specialty lenses for these athletes. And that's really what today is all about. So what is sports vision? Well, it's really broad, right? So sports vision can be anything that you want it to be. It can be the fitting of sports eyewear. It can be the fitting of contact lenses for sports. Um, it can be anything you want. But the way I think about sports vision is it's all about enhancing the visual processes to improve athletic and sports performance. It's really about giving that edge to an athlete at any level. You know, majority of how we react in everyday life is visual. I think it's about 70% of, of what we get is visual and how we respond to that. The visual process drives the motor response. Think about eye-hand coordination. You see something, you, you process it, you anticipate it, then you react to it. So let's go through the sports vision pyramid. Uh, this is credit to Dr. Levy. He's with iCheck Systems LLC. Uh, I appreciate him providing this graphic to me. So like any structure has a foundation, right? So a pyramid here, the base of the foundation is something that all of us can do in our practices. We can really enhance visual acuity, improve contrast sensitivity. We think about this monocularly first, right? You, you improve the right eye as best as you can, you improve the left eye as best as you can, give them the best acuity that you can. Well, now what has to happen is we have to build the binocular system, right? We have the monocular system and together it comes together to appreciate the 3D world around us. So depth perception. You can't really have depth perception unless you have really good functioning uh, monocular uh, eyes, right? So good acuities. So now we get this input and the eyes have to merge it together and we appreciate depth, right? That's the next level of the pyramid. Well, what happens then? So now the brain gets this information and has to process it and has to decide on a motor response. And the brain has to go, okay, I can see well, I'm seeing it in depth you know, what's my next response? Am I going to make a response or am I going to not make a response? We call this go, no go. You know, think about swinging a bat, right? So you see the ball, where is the ball? Brain's going to go, should I, should I swing or should I not? Okay, well, it's decided to swing. So what happens next? Now we have the visual information and we have to have a motor response that is um, good enough for the information that the brain has said, go ahead and make that, ma make that a swing. And all of this comes together and it, it enhances athletic ability, right? So from the foundation all the way up, it, it ends up with on-field performance. And if you have any of those layers in the pyramid that are weak, your ultimate, your final response, your on-field performance is gonna be reduced. And you know a lot of this can get really complex. I mean, I love doing the vision training sessions and the performance vision evaluations and all of that stuff, but we really have to go back and say, if we're training someone without understanding how good their binocular vision system is, how good their acuities are, all we're doing is we're just building on those things that we don't have them doing very well and don't have them doing very strongly, right? So 
you know, once you get into true performance evaluations and, and vision training, you really have to start to think about the binocular vision system and vision therapy and, and all that sort of stuff. Okay. So, you know, now that we know patients are playing sports, we know we are right at the base of that foundation of their sports vision pyramid. How can we engage our patients? How can we get them to, to tell us about the sports that they're playing or the activities that they're playing? You know, I suggest that you ask every single patient what activities they participate in. Have a pre-exam questionnaire to get them thinking. Um, and, you know, that's a tough one because how many questionnaires are we going to have in our practices, right? Dry eye, uh, hobbies. Now we're saying sports in the side. Um, how do you use your eyes? All that stuff. Don't have a questionnaire, then talk to them in the exam room. I mean, that's what I do. Did it this morning. Guy came in and said, you know, I really can't putt. I keep hitting the ball to the left. And we spoke about all sorts of stuff. And I said, well, when your head's down, you're looking to the left, your eyes could be aligned a little differently. You know, let's talk about this a little bit more. I think we spent a good five minutes just chatting about him putting and how he kept hitting it to the left. Okay. You really have to get in with these patients and tell them, hey, I'm the expert at the vision side, but you're the expert at the sport. So you really got to help me out and say, you know, what is the deficiency? What's happening? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the detective and help you solve that so you can, get, you can have better athletic performance. You want to ask them how many hours a week they're playing. You want to ask them how stable their vision is in their activity. Usually you're going to get, oh, everything's good. I haven't noticed anything differently. You know, everything's good. I just, I just need another prescription. Well, now you know that sports vision pyramid, right? So you got to dig a little deeper. Hey, when you're playing your sport, do you have to blink to clear your vision? Do you have to constantly refocus? How is your night vision? Are you getting glare at nighttime? How, how are you tracking the ball at night compared to the daytime? If you're playing golf, what's your short game like? Are you putting well? Are you, are you able to track the ball well? So, you know, all these questions just start to plant the seed. And one thing I suggest you do is you start calling them athletes. Everyone wants to feel good, right? I mean, you call me an athlete, I'm over the moon, even though I'm, I'm not that good at soccer. But you call me an athlete and I think, wow, man, you know, I'm doing something, right? I'm, I'm playing a sport that I can succeed in and I can win something. Okay, so talk, talk the language with them. Okay, so there are lots of questions that we can start to get athletes to think about the quality of their vision and not just being able to see. That's, I think, the main point here, right? So as you plan your questions, you consider visual stability, you know, clarity of vision, contrast sensitivity. You want to think about these things because different sports have different, different requirements. Think about clarity of vision. So I like soccer. I play in midfield. I don't need to have amazing acuity. I don't need 20-15 acuity. A lot of my game is I'm, I'm looking out at the, at the pitch and I'm going, am I going to pass right? Am I going to pass left? Can I see my player or not, right? I'm not trying to look at the seam on the ball. Now, if I'm a goalkeeper, then I want to go, hey, can I track that ball? What's my acuity like? If a goalkeeper's got 20-40 acuity, we're in trouble. If they have 20-20, we're, we're, we're really happy with that, right? Better is always better. But I'm, I'm not going to put a prescription on, a, on an athlete with 20-20 vision to get them 20-15 if their position in their sport doesn't require it. So you want to really dig a little deeper with them. Think about dry eye. Is dry eye affecting their acuity? Is that the cause of, of their uh, blurry vision, their intermittently blurry vision? Or is it a contact lens that's not fitting well? Are they swimming? If they're swimming, it's a, it's a home run ortho-K patient right there. They just don't know that they don't need to, to rely on some sort of correction during the day while they're swimming. Young patients, they're playing sports and their myopia is increasing, right? We know that. So we can intervene early and we get the best of both worlds. We can fit them into some sort of myopia management strategy and improve their sports performance and their visual performance. So, you know, vision is not just limited to sports. Think about it. We have all these other hobbies that, are, that people are doing. We have a patient that enjoys bird watching. You know, I never thought about asking this patient about the challenges that they had. And then I came to realize that they're looking at these birds and they're trying to differentiate between very small color perceptions to then look down at their book and go, oh, that's what I think it is right over there. And just think about that. That's, that's near, far, near, far, and they're constantly going between the two. And if they're wasting a few seconds going between the two, well, that's affecting their performance and their hobby, right? All right, so now that you've asked them all these questions, now we have to evaluate, do, 
do a very basic evaluation, you know, your contact lens evaluation, do a good evaluation. For the purposes of this lecture, I'm just talking about anterior sex stuff. Okay. So you're going to check their dry eye. You're going to flip the lids, look for GPC, make sure the cornea is normal. If it's not normal, that doesn't rule them out from some sort of custom lens to enhance their performance. You should have that conversation with them. You know, I know I have patients coming in thinking the world is over. I need, I'm a minus 15 and I can't really do anything because my vision is so bad. Well, we have options to fit these patients. And we'll, we'll go through some of that today. Another thing you want to do is a really good refraction. Now, just remember your final refraction that you measured is not always the best for, for performance, for visual performance. Sometimes you're playing with the binocular vision system by giving different prescriptions. You know, if you have a patient who's got esophoria and you're really loading on the minus, well, you're, you're affecting some of their performance up close and you're affecting their performance going from near to far. So you want to be thinking about all this stuff. Um, how much sphere do they have? Sill? Are they oblique? Are they presbyopes? We have options for all these patients. Always select the best option for their ocular health. Your next consideration is going to be the effect of the lens on their visual performance. Okay. Let's think about this one. Someone comes in with a plano minus 50 axis 180 and complains of blur. So you're probably not going to give them a prescription. Dig a little deeper. It's a binocular vision issue. You can help them just not with a contact lens. You know, make, make, make things custom. It, tell them it takes time to refocus. If I could put you into a lens that is always clear, would that make you better at your sport? Again, you're kind of tying things back to, you know, it's a, what, what was it, like 72% of us are playing a sport? You know there's a 72% chance they're probably playing a sport. So these are your options. We have, you know, the gamut on soft lenses. We've got GP lenses, hybrid squirrels, and ortho-K. Let's go through some of the pros and cons of these. Uh, soft lenses, super comfortable, right? Um, good acuity and low prescriptions. I've, I have noticed for performance, the higher the prescription, so anything over a, a, probably about a four I've noticed, a minus four is going to start to affect performance on, the, on their vision. You get into the minus 10s, minus 11s, you're probably in trouble. They can see well, they can function well, but they're not getting that crisp sharpness that they need. Some of the cons on a soft lens, higher risk of infections, okay, relatively speaking, compared to some of the other modalities. Uh, degrading optics, higher um, RXs and higher cells. GP lenses, gas permeables, really good acuity, very customizable. You know, when you get into the presbyopes, you start doing trifocals, bifocals, progressives, um, really, really amazing options. But for most sports and most active lifestyles, not the best choice. You get something under that lens and man, they are unhappy, really, really uncomfortable. The other thing is when they blink and they get that little temporary blur, that affects performance, right? In business, we say time is money. In sports, time is performance. Let's talk about hybrids. Um, very good acuity in hybrids, great optics. You get the GP, GP optics with it. Uh, they're really stable. You can, get, you can get higher astigmats into these lenses. They're customizable. Not as, customiz as customizable as GPs. Probably not as comfortable as a soft lens, but pretty close with their, with their soft lens skirt. Scleral lenses, I haven't fit that many scleral lenses on athletes, mostly because there are higher RXs and irregular corneas and, and those patients are just not out there doing a lot of that stuff so far that I have found in our, in our population here. Um, so squirrels, good optics, good acuity, high, high prescription availability, bit of a steep learning curve for the patient, relatively speaking, and higher cost. And then ortho -K. So they're free of daytime contact lenses, great for myopia management, low risk of infection. Uh, acuity, I have found, is not as crisp and sharp for athletes. So I'm probably not putting a, you know, an amateur or a minor league player in ortho -K because they're playing at night. It's going to affect their acuity a little bit. Okay. And of course, if you don't wear an ortho -K lens consistently, it is definitely going to affect your acuity, which is going to affect the base of that sports vision pyramid. All right. So I put together some tables here showing um, some case reports. Let's go through the first one. Uh, this is an example. These are hypothetical, by the way. These are not real patients. Um, first one's a soccer player or football, which is what I call it. You know, some, some habits are hard for me to break. I still call it that because uh, I grew up in Africa. So let's go through this patient. Um, a 27-year-old central midfield player 
uh, plays in a recreational league, mostly at night. The concerns the patient had states uh, good visual stability with glasses, interested in contact lenses, first time wearer. Ocular health, pretty unremarkable, no dry eye, no GPC. K's, uh, pretty good, not much corneal astigmatism there. Refractive error, pretty, pretty low myo, minus 125, minus 150. So I'm curious, which lens designer would you put this athlete in? Can we get our poll? All right, so first time contact lens wearer. 66% of you said a soft contact lens. I have 7% gas permeable, 18% hybrid, 3% scleral, 7% ortho K. All right, so we have a lot of soft lens respondees here. All right, let's check it out. So what would I do? I would probably go hybrid. And why would I go hybrid? Well, first, they haven't ever worn a lens before. So they're not coming from that soft lens feeling into a hybrid where they're going, oh, it's not as comfortable. So that's a win for you right there, right? They don't know any, any better. Uh, sharper optics. You know, even in the low, earlier I said the low kind of spherical powers, you can get away with the soft lens. And you can, and that's a good choice. But I'm thinking night vision, better contrast, um, better stability, I'm going hybrid, okay? So we're gonna improve their visual performance and build value for this athlete by giving them something a little bit more custom. So when they're playing their sport, they're going, hey, you know what? I'm in this special lens over here, okay? Now, you could fit this lens and you could go, hey, it didn't quite work out because I played my sport and I didn't like the fact that, you know, I got sweat in my eyes and, and all this stuff. Then you're gonna change around. I probably wouldn't go ortho in a 27-year-old um, for one, it's not, that their vision is not gonna be that sharp, they're not playing competitively. But at 27, I find that the consistency of use is a little diminished. Kids, lack of uh, consistent sleep time. Um, so that just kind of becomes a bit of a problem. Okay, that was a good one. All right, case two, basketball player, 12 year old, plays point guard, plays at club level, games are mostly late afternoon or, or morning on the weekends. The concern is, this athlete sweats a lot and, and then the eyes burn. Their vision has become slightly blurry in the last three months. They notice it more at school than they do on the court. They're currently in a daily disposable soft contact lens. Ocular health, pretty unremarkable. Ks, nothing, nothing scary there, um, mostly spherical. Refractive error, again, pretty, you know, the same Rx as the previous um, case. 2015, I usually don't go all the way down to 2015, um, but I did it in this case because they're an athlete and their myopic prescription increased by a quarter diopter, okay? So what are you going to do for, these, for this patient? All right, so we have some clues here. They have blur at school, but they're not coming in saying there's an issue on the court, right? So they're not perceiving... Uh, a reduction in their in their performance related to their vision. And we know that basketball doesn't quite require 2015 ultra sharp acuity. But you have a slight increase in myopia. So you have that, that quarter diopter in one eye and the half diopter in the other eye. Um, and then you have this complaint of burning from the sweat. And if you've worn contact lenses, you know that's a really annoying feeling, right? So what are we gonna do for this patient? I would, I would go ortho K with this patient. So you can help them in two ways. One, you manage that myopia. You know, any increase in myopia is, is a concern. So we wanna address that. You're gonna improve that burning from sweat. I mean, the sweat's still, still gonna come in, right? Like they're, they're gonna get that in the eyes. But sweat under a contact lens, when I was wearing contact lens, really sucked for me. And so I just didn't like that. Um, so I'm gonna get them out of those contact lenses and the acuity is gonna be okay for athletic performance in basketball. Again, they don't need that ultra sharp acuity. They're young, low sphere, you're gonna get really, really good uh, vision with ortho K lens. Though. All right, another example. Let's get the golfers in here. So 65 year old, uh, plays three times a week, recreational, no competition, usually plays in the early morning. Says can't track the ball as well as before. Scorecard has gradually become blurry. Currently in a soft daily disposable multifocal, 
hasn't noticed any issues at work. So 20 happy at work. Okay. Let's look at some of the ocular health here. No GPC, uh, no dry eye, a little bit of um, NS, should be in both eyes there. And the K's got about a diopter there, a corneal sill, and a little bit on the right side, on the left eye also. Refractive error, minus 350, minus one axis 180, can, can get corrected to 2020. Minus four, minus one axis 180, 2020, with a plus 225 add. What would you like to do for this patient? Can we get our poll up, please? All right, we're just waiting for our results. So we have a hybrid, multifocal, extended depth of field. 54% of you would go hybrid, 20% on the GP bifocal. 14% um, said keep the same, just change the prescription. And 13% said do a hybrid single vision with readers. All right, so let's go through this one. This is a good example of a patient we might have put into a soft sphere lens because they were always functional with their daily activities, right? 20, happy. Happy at work, no issues. Um, yeah, just kind of getting, getting by on the course, right? But now that you know the sports vision pyramid and you know that that base of the sports vision pyramid is really important, you have to think about what prescription can I put them in that is gonna still keep them 20 happy, but actually improve their ability to play their sport and have a better time playing their sport. So address the sports concern with the best optics you can. What are we gonna put this patient in? I would put them either into a soft toric multifocal or a hybrid extended depth of field multifocal, okay? Why would I stay away from a single vision lens? Because one, they're not playing competitively. So they're not really having um, any issues that would want me to then cause them to have to get a pair of readers every time they want to look at the scorecard or their phone or track how far the ball has gone on their phone, right? So that's kind of one issue. And two, on the same prescription, if you did spherical equivalent that have the same, the, the same concern, okay? The hybrid is a great option. I like the hybrid because they'll get those extended depth of field optics. It'll be pretty sharp for them at distance as well. And I think the tracking issue would be negated because you're taking care of that astigmatism with the hybrid lens. A GP lens is a really good option, except golfers are outdoors. And when that wind gets going and stuff gets under that GP lens, oh, they're not going to like it. So you can do it. I probably would not do that in someone that's outdoors in the wind a lot. All right, let's talk about hybrid contact lenses. So you've noticed I really like the hybrid lenses. And... I used to fit a lot of their hybrids before, but I'm fitting a lot more in the last six months of their new design. You know, with the hybrids, you get the best of both worlds. You get those GP optics, you get that soft lens feel with the skirt, and their new lens is just amazing. It makes things fitting much, uh, makes fitting it much easier. The biggest issue I had with hybrids before was the time. Like you'd get a lens and then it wouldn't fit so well the first time and then you made a change and it came back and that it was fitting well and then you had to send them back and then they came back and then, you know, you made another change because the skirt was a little tight all of a sudden. Um, but the new lens is taking care of all of that. You empirically fit this lens, you customize it to the patient so you're building value and confidence. Uh, the first lens for me is usually spot on now. So my chair time has just decreased dramatically. You can take care of those astigmatism patients and the single vision patients and then the presbyopes because you have the extended depth of field, okay? So the hybrids really address most of the challenges. We, 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 can, we can really fit all sizes, all shapes, all ages of patients, okay? Uh, Synergize did a study, uh, 400 soft lens wearers reported that 75% experienced some kind of issue with their toric lenses and are willing to pay more to alleviate it. So here's how you differentiate your practice. You think about their activities, you tell them, I'm going to fit you in, in a great custom lens designed just for you, and it's going to improve your vision and improve your performance. You're going to enjoy playing our sport. Okay. So the hybrid lenses are GP in the middle. You see the soft skirt around it there. Fit all sorts of eyes. It's customizable. The old Duet portfolio has a lot of parameters also in addition to the new one. Let's go through that because sometimes the ID lens, the new lens, is not always the best option for the patient. So you're going to look back at the other lenses, and you're going to go, okay, I have a center dis center distance design for my presbyope. I have a center near design. 
and um, the optics are going to be really good. You can manipulate the, some of those zones over there, which is really good. And then you have high RXs here. The new lens basically has an optic zone that's increased. So they changed it from seven to 8.5 millimeters with this special curve design. The curve basically allows for better centration and distribution of weight to increase um, the geography of the lens, essentially. When you have that, and in this new design, you can now change it by 0.12 uh, diopter increments instead of 0.25. And when you fit it, you're fitting mid K essentially. Um, and you know, Synergize is gonna have a lecture coming up, I think in the next week or so. I encourage you guys to attend that. They're gonna get into all the technical aspects of this. Earlier, I said one of the issues that I had with the older design was the skirt. Sometimes it was too tight, sometimes it was too loose. Well, they changed all that and they came out with their linear skirt and it's really custom fit to the patient based on their HVID, okay? So what happens here is now you're gonna get less tightening. So for me, what I have seen is that lens doesn't suck on after a few days. It, it, when I look at it that first, those first five, 10 minutes, it's pretty much staying like that when I see them at the one week follow-up, okay? So if we look at this graph over here, or this table, when you measure their HVID, you're gonna, you're gonna change the angle of that skirt, okay? When you measure HVID, I use the Synergize ruler, and I found that that's pretty accurate, but you can also do it with your topographer, and you just go you know, edge to edge. You need to make sure that you're exactly in the middle, wherever you can be. And sometimes you'll notice that the horizontal is a little different to the vertical. Um, in that situation, I would probably go with the, with the vertical measurement, okay? Um, another issue I kind of had with the old design, it was harder to remove. But with this new skirt, the, the new one just, I mean, it pops right out. So that's good. So how do you order this lens? I mean, their consultants are amazing. Uh, I, I usually call the consultants, but sometimes when it's the end of the day and I'm like, look, I just want to get this lens. I know exactly what I want. I'll go online. And they have a really good setup online. You just plug some stuff in, the Ks, the HVID, you put the manifest refraction in, put your ad power in, and it spits out exactly which lens you should get because they know on their algorithm what curve you need based on the HVID. Uh, if you're kind of struggling and you're not, you're not so sure about it, definitely call consultation. I mean, they're, they're amazing, okay? So again, three things you need to place an order, Ks, HVID, and prescription. So you forgot to measure HVID. You wanna be doing a topography on every single uh, specialty lens where it's not the end of the world. You're gonna go back, get your topographer, a ruler out, and get that HVID. Okay, without the HVID, you, you can't order this lens. Okay. All right, so as private practitioners or, you know, we're in primary care, what is this, what does this new lens offer us? So for me, it's better vision, it's a better fit, it's comfortable, and it's more profit. Okay, now I want to take you through some of the case studies that um, are of our real patients here, so no more hypotheticals. We have our first case study here. Uh, he's an ortho K wearer. He's a lacrosse goalie, 14 years old, plays at club level, really good. Ocular health, really good, no dry eye, no GPC. Uh, K's got a little bit of astigmatism there in, in both eyes, but refract him and it's not as much. So he's got some lenticular most likely. I put him in an ortho K lens. Uh, he's a long time long time patient. He actually started off with, um, with the intent for myopia management, and then he developed into this amazing athlete. And we've kept him in ortho K because he really just, he needs less hassle when he's playing. Okay. And, and that's kind of what he told me. I fit him into the BE retainer lens first, and it was um, working pretty well, but then I realized I needed a little bit more control on the lens because of the uh, astigmatism that I was getting. So I fit him into a dual axis lens from Paragon and he's doing really well with the lens. So those lenses we put him in. His innated VA now at the end of the day is about 20, 25 uh, in one eye. He lost a letter and then gained a letter in the other eye. Okay, so with, with both of them, and I should have put that here, but he's 20, 20 with both. Um, I could not get him to give me a, a statement, except he's happy and his parents are happy, okay? So you scored big because you helped him with his sport. 
he's free of contact lenses, and you're doing something about his uh, progression on myopia. Okay. I could have gone with a daily disposable soft lens, and I could have gone with a, a lens to control his myopia, but he really wanted to be free of daytime contact lenses. Okay. Uh, the other thing I like about fitting these younger patients and these younger athletes is lower risk of infection. They're not messing about with the lens. The lens pops out in the game. It's moved around. They just don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> okay. Case two. Ortho K soccer player, 10 years of age uh, she plays left defender sometimes she goes up so left midfield so i'm asking her questions like how important is your vision how far do you have to see when you're playing defend in defense you no know, do you have to see things super sharp do you just need to know where someone is okay those are sorts of questions i'm asking her how what time of the day are you playing are you playing at night are you playing in in, in the daytime do you have morning games how many hours are you sleeping before your games on average, you know, is school really, is school really intense? Um, because you want to fit them in the right modality, right? You don't just want to go, oh, ortho, okay, great. No daytime contacts in your sport. You're not messing about. But meanwhile, they're getting four hours of sleep and the acuity is changing and not always consistent. So I want to think about those things. Uh, the, her ortho, okay, lenses, uh, she ended up in a dual axis lens, okay? And her unaided acuity, and I just saw her yesterday, actually was 2020 minus two in the right eye, 2020 minus one in the left eye, OU, a nice sharp 2020. Okay, her comments. Ability to see the ball. It's nice not having to worry about wearing contacts for swimming or getting them lost, knocked out during a soccer game. Okay, so she's also a swimmer. Again, you score, parents are happy. Initially, I fit her into a daily disposable lens for myopia management, actually, and she just couldn't overcome the visual discomfort. The blur up close was a bit of an issue for her. Um, so you know, thinking about the sports vision pyramid, if I had thought about that at the time, I probably would not have gone uh, soft daily disposable. Okay. All right. Here, I threw in a map of her, her topography, and this is just the right eye. And I just did a difference map from her baseline and her most recent visit, which I think was yesterday or the day before. And you can see a nice centered, really strong bullseye there. So good acuity for her. Case study three, hybrid lens on a flag football player. He's 35 years of age, plays wide receiver, and he plays club level. So he's recreational. You know, he, he used to be in track and field, and then he kind of transitioned to, to football. Ocular health, unremarkable, everything's good there. Uh, K's are looking pretty normal, nothing irregular there. Refractive error, he's a, he's a high myope, so minus 550, a little bit of sill, a minus six, a little bit of sill. You know, I probably would not prescribe this prescription, but this is his true manifest reading. Um, his HVID was 11.6, his previous lens, he was in a monthly soft lens, he was a new patient to me. Uh, he came in, he was 20, 30 in the right eye, and he lost a lens, so he didn't have one in the left eye. Okay. Uh, I put him in a, in a hybrid ID single vision lens. Those are the parameters there. His visual acuity was 20, 20 plus two in the right eye, 20, 20 plus one in the left eye. So he's basically seeing 20, 15 OU. Okay. I lose a few letters here. I did a survey. I'm going to share the results with you, but in the end of the survey, I asked them to all... Um, just give me their comments on, on their lens and how things are going. And this is his comment. The hybrid lens has been great for locating the football on last minute neck turns when finding the ball. Also, when coming out of my route running and finding the ball, being able to focus a little better on the football while in bright lights has also been something that has been more efficient for me because of the more defined contrast in color. Let me tell you, when I put a hybrid lens on this guy, I've never had a patient tell this to me. The first thing he said to me was like, whoa, this is like 4K versus HD. And everything just popped for this guy. Like in the exam room, he was like, wow, I'm seeing all these colors. That's just amazing, right? I've never seen colors like this. At his follow-up, he, he said the same thing. He said, this is like better than HD vision. He kept saying 4K, this is 4K, okay? So now you have not just a patient who wants to see better and can see better. You have an athlete who you really made a huge difference in how they're going to perform on the pitch. I mean, there's a phrase, right? The proof is in the pudding. Have you guys ever heard that? Well, this is, this is the proof, okay? So tying all this back to our sports vision pyramid, 
We helped him improve his athletic performance by building a, a really strong foundation with the use of a hybrid lens. So we got him solid on his 2015 acuity, basically. And then we've improved his contrast sensitivity with this. Okay. Let me tell you guys a little other thing I've been working on. So I've been getting these patients and I've been uh, running, through, running them through my sports vision clinic and I'm comparing a soft lens and a hybrid lens and how it's affecting their acuity, but their contrast sensitivity. And I threw in depth perception there as well. Uh, I'm still kind of sifting through some data. I don't have that much. It's a bit hit or miss right now. So a lot of this is subjective uh, improvement that we're noticing with patients that, that are, are enjoying these hybrid lenses. Okay, so last case I have, it's um, a baseball player. He's a pro baseball player in a hybrid lens, 32 years of age. He's a hitter, outfielder, and he plays the pro level. Ocular health, no dry eye but he's had mild GPC. So when I first saw him, he was in a monthly lens years ago. We switched him to a daily disposable lens and because of GPC and we treated that. And he was really happy. You know, he came back and said, wow, I'm, I'm really seeing well. My, my stats have all gone up with this soft toric lens that he was in. Okay, and the parameters are, are there at the bottom. He's in a minus two, minus 75, and a minus 150, minus 125. Um, his K readings, he has a little bit of uh, lenticular sill is what it looks like, okay? When I first saw him, it was actually not even a toric lens. He was in a sphere lens, okay? So what do we do? We, we put him in this ID lens, this ID hybrid lens. Now I know some of you are thinking, man, you're going to put this GPC patient in a hybrid lens, but he's playing at a really elite level, right? And so any improvement I can give him I'm gonna give him. And so what I said to him was, look, wear your soft lenses when you're out and about during the day. When game time comes, stick the hybrid on, okay? Because I educated him on the GPC and I told him how we can kind of control that. So that was our plan. All right. The comments in his survey, and, and these are word for word, okay? I just copy pasted them. I like that I never feel like I need to refocus or any moments of glare or blurriness. And I was texting him last night. He said, since we put him in the hybrids in his preseason, he won MVP at his preseason. And he attributes that to exactly what his comment is there. He doesn't have to refocus. and He doesn't have glare or blurriness. So that, that astigmatism just got taken care of with the hybrid lens, right? I mean, he, he liked the soft lens, the daily disposable. Um, he just didn't share with me that Every once in a while, he had to refocus and then he had to mentally reset because his vision had gone out, lost information, now he's back, okay? Um, as a side note, I did work with this athlete uh, in my sports vision center and we worked on some of those higher levels in the sports vision pyramid. So again, we built the base, we built on it, we came back to the base and we said, hey, we can do better. And now I expect the rest of the pyramid to be even better for him. All right, so I sent a survey out to these, um, these case studies, these four patients. I got three responses. I could not get the, the last one. I tried and tried and called mom, called dad, did everything. All right, let's go through these. So my first question was, or my first statement, please rate the stability of your vision, okay? Uh, five was, I'm extremely happy. One was, I'm extremely unhappy, okay? So our, our ortho case soccer player said four. She's happy. Our hybrid wearers gave me a five. Okay. While wearing your contact lenses, please rate the overall stability of your vision while playing your sport. So now I'm saying, okay, I put you on this lens. You're happy with your vision. But when you're playing with your sport, what's your level of satisfaction? All of them gave me a five. Okay. While wearing your contact lens, Please rate the overall satisfaction of your vision while playing your sport. Is that a duplicate? I'm so sorry. That's a duplicate. That was not supposed to be a duplicate. Which contact lenses gave you superior optics? Okay, visual stability and quality of vision while participating in your sport. This question, I need to give you the context. The context is compared to your previous lens, which was a soft lens. How do you rate the quality of your vision in your sport with your new lens? And they all said they preferred the current lens modality to their previous soft lenses. Okay. So in conclusion, think about the base of the sports pyramid in all your interactions with athletes. 
your selection on contact lenses is going to have a profound impact on the patient's athletic performance and enjoyment in their sport. I love sports. I want to do well. I want to win, but I want to enjoy myself. And if the last thing, you know, the last thing I want to worry about is, is my vision affecting my performance? I have the ball in my feet and I feel like I need to rub my eye. Is that a problem? Okay. If I'm playing a, a racket sport and my vision is not stable, is that a problem? Okay. Major, majority of your patients lead an active lifestyle or play a sport. Start thinking about focus questions and what visual challenges they have in their sport and their activity. Make them the expert of their sport and you're the expert on the, on the, on the vision side. Ortho K is a great option for young athletes. You, it's a win-win situation. You get the myopia management and you get the performance that they want. And the synergized hybrid contact lenses subjectively improve visual stability and confidence in an athlete's vision and performance. I want to thank all of you for listening to me there for, for all that. Thank you to Dr. Wu and thank you, thank you to Dr. Squafani from uh, Synergize for making this possible. I appreciate your time and I really hope that I've given you something to think about. Even though some of this information is basic, something to think about, help your patients, help them enjoy their sports because you know 72% of you are playing a sport, right? So you can relate to them. Okay, got some references there. International Sports Vision Association, Synergize, and the Physical Activity Council, which is where I got all those stats from. Awesome. Well, thanks, Dr. Samji. That was a super interesting and informative presentation. I remember when we were chatting last night and kind of looking at some of the information, uh, it, you were saying that some of this seemed very basic, but for someone like me that doesn't do any sort of sports vision at all, this is uh, it's super interesting and, and exciting information. So thank you so much for a wonderful presentation.